Eric and Lanny, uh, how the frick have you been the last year? <laughs> we have been good, all things considered. Yeah. We got a roof over our heads. We got food to eat. We're spending lots of times with our kids. We're yeah. busy working. We're not busy yeah. making any money, but we're very busy working. And uh, yeah. Yeah. It's going. It's going. <laughs> it's going. We're surviving. Just like- riding the waves. <laughs> I love it. I love it. What uh yeah, I remember like last year, a little uh, less than a year ago. Yeah, That's more than right. a year ago. We we were in an arcade. Uh, you know, hanging That's right. out. Eating those massive walk, pieces of pizza. Eating jumbo slice in Tampa or wherever we were, Orlando. Yeah. Uh and then later that night, I don't drink, but I got to experience what drinking is like with you guys because um, I watched all these Instagram stories the next day of you guys singing karaoke. And, uh, we did, I was we like, did not do karaoke. Is it at the Creative Summit? No. We yeah. And you were in a room with, it was like a private karaoke room. Well, we have definitely done There's that, footage. but I don't remember doing it in Florida. Yeah. I think I think we missed out on the karaoke too. No, I'm gonna find the footage. I'm I'm texting today. I'm gonna to find. Okay. We'll put it in okay. the video. Okay. <laughs> I love I'm, it. Maybe my uh, memories of karaoke in China have just overridden that. That's another yeah, level yeah. of kar- karaoke. I yeah. can't imagine. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So what's the biggest difference between uh you know last year you know we're excited we're you know like 2020 is going to be everybody's year. We're all feeling yeah. pumped. It's it's great for everybody. You guys just came off like a two year world tour, teaching the kids, you know, traveling, shooting, everything, and then all of us, you know, to a a, a grinding halt. halt. What does that What does that change been like for you guys? Actually, to be honest, at the beginning, uh, so last year at this time, I mean that the fact that we had to refund, you know, a quarter million dollars was was terrifying. But there was also a huge amount of relief. Um, That's true. Mm. Lanny and I were heading into the busiest three months of our lives in terms of work. Um, I didn't want to leave. Um, I hate leaving the kids, um, especially with with the ages that they're getting to now. I just, I don't want to leave them. And when everything got canceled, yeah. I was like, honestly, it was like a weight was lifted off my shoulders. I'm like, I don't have to, because we were on our way to France, Europe Mexico. Europe, Mexico, California, all within like like a month yeah. and a half. For for weddings and, and workshops. And I was dreading yeah. it. I was dreading it. Yeah. And then it all got canceled. Then I was like, huh, yeah. I can spend time with my kids. So in some ways, yeah. it was a big relief. There was a big sense of relief then. And mm-hmm. um you know, we ended up getting to do a lot of things as a family that probably wouldn't have happened, <laughs> couldn't have happened. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we, and in some ways we kind of got back to our, our roots, um, yeah. be, you know, before, before the crazy world of wedding photography, yeah. um, we lived and breathed for outdoor adventures. And last summer yeah. we ended up doing all kinds of paddling trips, backpacking trips, um, camping trips with the kids, and uh yeah well, and so, it's, yeah it really helped us um like my main goal now is to never get to that state again like literally yeah. looking into the future like looking into this summer and and when we're scheduling things i'm like we're ne- I, and i have to remember this i constantly have to remind myself of this every morning when i sit down to my yeah. desk it's we're not going back there yeah, we're, we're in terms of there. biting off more than we we want to chew, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? which is so easy yeah. to do as entrepreneurs, yeah. right? When it's your bread and butter, yeah, and it's yeah. like, well, if they pay enough, well, yeah. it makes it worth it, yeah. but really, it doesn't. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and it's tough. Like it's it's one of those things where it's like, um, it was like at least here in the states, you you had gym class back in the day, right? And it's like they teach you about health, and there's a uh, use overuse and abuse you know something like that and it's kind of this idea of you know i know for myself and my own like uh you think of like food every all food is awesome you know right in the grand scheme of things right whether it is coke whether it's a yeah. burger whether whether it's kale whatever and then you get to the overuse <laughs> level and you're like I-, I don't know and some people tap out at overuse and then you get to the abuse level and you're like oh this is an issue and that's kind of you know i feel like for you guys what i'm hearing is you got a a chance to reset like you said and go back to your roots and like you know that's kind of cool you could take a fresh start and be like okay 
what are the boundaries we missed and we should have implemented or just been more strict yeah. on mm-hmm. to help us get there? You know, you know, and it's it is hard though, right? Because what I've learned, even in my non two man world, where, but it's like there will always be enough mm-hmm. money. Like somebody has enough money to make us say yes, and you know, you have to pick and choose when you're going to be like. I know this weekend I'm going to work my tail off and it's going to, I'm going to like it. I'm going to like it 85%, but man, it's, I wish I could, you know, really be fully into this, uh, without missing, you know, whatever you are yeah. missing too yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Like so. I'm turning down <laughs> now and, and I realize we're in a very pr- privileged position to be able to do this. Like, um, but, sure. but I'm turning down all summer weddings because our kids are off in the yeah. summer. They're, now it's yeah, got four years left of school. There's that's four summers left wow. to spend together as a family camping and paddling and climbing and hiking. Yeah. And in, in Canada, where, where we live in Canada, I mean, those two months are <laughs> the best two months, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. We, the best we got time to, to be in you know, Canada. eight months of winter and then, you know, yeah. a long prolonged yeah. shoulder season in the spring and fall. But our summer is when the kids are off school. Yeah. And of course, that's when a lot of yeah. people choose to get married as well. So it's tricky. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah. No, that's cool. But it's awesome. I'm all about like we just had an episode a few weeks ago and you guys know this, but it's like, you know, your price is a boundary. But then there are other boundaries, too, where you're like, again, like, OK, here's some other things as your values change, yeah. like. I'm not a parent yet, but it's like when I got married, I asked my wife, I said, hey, you know, like I will work as little or as much as you feel comfortable with me doing so that we can have husband wife time or whatever that feels comfortable to you. Yeah. (laughs) Only because I knew my tendencies would be like, I'll shoot and take everything. You know, like I the fact that we get to do this is so such a pleasure. So I'm like, why wouldn't I, Um, you know, but it's you you adjust and you know and that was like uh different times like when we first got married it was much more calm and so it was like okay yeah we can spend time together we're only taking 35 weddings a year or whatever that number is and then like my wife decided to go back to school and she was just never (laughs) home uh like she was home but she was never home and she was like you could take whatever you want and so like 2019 before we met like i was i was going two man vibes i did 60 flights you know, we were, I was flying a lot. We did 40 weddings, you know, 15 corporate gigs, booked my first six figure client. And I was like, okay, this is what I could do if I was, had no boundaries. That's right. <laughs> but, but then you have other things you lose, right? You're like, uh, you know, you lose time to work out or you lose time to, you know, your boundaries yeah. of eating. Cause you're eating an yeah. airport hard boiled egg yeah. oh, God. and that's not great yeah. either. So totally. <laughs> yeah. No, I, hear, yeah, I hear you. And <clears throat> it's, it's interesting cause we have in the past done a very good job at setting boundaries. Like a few years ago, we set the boundary of 15 weddings, but we haven't readjusted, right? Like we didn't Mm -hmm. readjust once we started teaching and we didn't readjust once we started talking at conferences and we didn't readjust once the kids got older. Like you have to readjust every couple months uh, based on the needs of yourself and your family. And yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, Yeah. that's a, that's a big, conversation in our house a lot of the time uh, it's my dream those words that you said to your wife like it is my, my yeah. it's my dream that Lani says those words to me one day i'll work as much and as little as you want just tell me can you imagine well, it's, it's <laughs> tricky when what we work on is the same thing i mean our business is yeah. it's not like erica has has her life and her business and i've got mine well we try and do it you know way. like if, if i were an entrepreneur and and you know two man studios was was my career hypothetically yeah. we i could say like listen when how much work can i take on but it's right it's all hypothetical that wouldn't happen it, it, it's it's tricky when everything we do we yeah. do together and every decision and consequence yeah. affects each other because it's 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 not just my baby it's not just her baby it's our thing you know uh, and yeah. every aspect of it from the from the shooting to the teaching you know to it's yeah, yeah. it's complicated yeah. it's complicated it, uh, it's so complicated and i feel like we're uh like this is really funny so don't be offended by this but like we're in the older echelon of photographers, yes. wedding photographers, we are, right? We are. So people listening, yeah. People listening are like, "Why would they ever stop? Don't you want more weddings?" You're like, "Listen, you'll get to a point where you can say no." And uh, we're um, way older. I want to ask are, a practical. Right? Like we're way older than you. 
I don't know. I mean, you guys look 22. So, I mean, <laughs> Lanny's like... We're 42. 17, we're 42. Christmas. Like, we 43. Are. Okay, you're 10 years older than me. We're 43. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so, 10 years. Uh, that's not bad. That's not bad. What... Um, I want to ask a practical question because I've been asking every photographer for this because it you know, it is everybody's first uh, pandemic. So, is everybody's handling it differently, all that <laughs> stuff. What was the motivation um, to refund or cancel everything or was it kind of a, a snowball where one wanted that or something and you were like let's just make that policy or was that kind of your policy before how well, did that really work you know where some people said we'll reschedule or you know what's well, that? well first let, of all let me answer this because i'm okay, the one that, that takes care of me yeah right so, <laughs> i was just gonna set the context for that though yeah yeah so yeah clients who booked us for their weddings rescheduled what we had to refund in, in this, uh, and we didn't refund all of them, but we refunded as much as we could, was all the photographers that had signed up for our workshops. And that's because mm. we feel them. All of a sudden, they lost all yeah. their work for the entire year, and they they paid a deposit for yeah. our workshop. And we're not going to be assholes. Yeah. And um yeah. And and yeah. say sorry, guys. There, I mean, people. There's some that decided to. Uh, some that were in the financial position that we were schedule to... for later workshop, yeah. but, but yeah. a lot of them yeah. were in our situation, right? A lot of them were like yeah. panicking. And yeah. so we refunded as many of them as we could um, because we understood the situation they were in. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, and, but it, and, yeah. and basically yeah. The, the snowball, it's interesting because if you remember when, when COVID hit kind of like where in the world it was hitting, we had a workshop in Spain, yeah. which was one of the first places in yeah. Europe, right? Okay, Spain workshop got canceled, yeah. you know? And then two days later, it, it had moved on and eventually yeah. we, we canceled the Mexico workshop. We canceled the workshops in the States. We canceled the Canada workshop. Like So within like a week or so, we had yeah. five or six sold out workshops around the world that all got canceled, right? Uh, so and we tried to reschedule. We obviously gave people the option to reschedule, but there was a lot of people that were panicking. Yeah. And yeah. Totally, yeah. So, yeah, it's true. It's it's. I mean, we empathize. Like yeah. photographers have been hit hard, so like, so hard. So the brides and grooms. I mean, that that part was easy. You know, we we schedule, we postpone. Okay. You know, and 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 we're a low volume yeah. wedding studio, so you know, we only had yeah. ten or twelve weddings. Um, yeah. For, so, for, for twenty twenty. Yeah. So so then what we did, um, and this was purely out of necessity, is we put a a, a workshop online where we literally taught like this. Yeah. Um, yeah. For the most affordable price that we've ever done. <laughs> um, yeah. And many people actually who c couldn't afford it did a donation to the food bank for it. Um, and we, mm. we also donated, I think about 10%, yeah, more than 10% of the earnings to charities. Cause I felt this like intense amount of almost guilt uh, be, uh, for earning money during the pandemic, but we literally needed to earn this sure. money in order to, to re refund all that refund the people. Yeah. So, yeah. I, and yeah. we are so privileged to, to be in the position where we could announce something online um, and sell 300 spots. Yeah. 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 So that was great. Right. Um, and all those photographers that invested in us, we are so grateful for. Yeah. And um yeah. They helped the community as a whole, like, because it, it sure. allowed us to refund and allowed us to finish what we've been creating. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's super cool. And I mean, it's, uh, yeah, I was just curious because so many people in the traditional wedding photographers, you know, maybe we're on that. It was kind of, I remember the first <laughs> one rescheduling and I remember I was like, you know, hearing rumors of people charging rescheduling fees, which now I would say, oh, that's normal. That's totally, that makes perfect sense if they're choosing to do that versus like abiding by whatever, at least in the US, like their local law. Um, you know, weddings that the three of us shoot where there's probably going to be a big party. Yeah. And, you know, mm -hmm. if we can't have that, we want to reschedule. Mm -hmm. um, but then like, it just like you said, I felt like it was like a push broom. And so you get like one thing and you're like, oh, that is being pushed by the push broom. And then over time, all your clients are like, nope, we're we're doing this thing. And it's it's so weird. It's so weird. But I, yeah, I wanted to kind of hear about that because some people did. Uh, like, I know one thing we did at the beginning was we'll say, OK, we'll reschedule for free. But let's keep your your uh, your payment schedule. So whenever your next payment oh, yeah. is due. You you still pay it for us, so that way we can take care of that money, so we can get some. Some people said, push it off, you know, 
Um, and it's one of those, it's probably six in one hand, half a dozen in the other, I think, you know, where if we, you know, took it now, it, like this year, at least for me, because we did that, half the weddings I'm shooting in theory will yeah. be for free, you know, or like yeah, they've exactly. already paid. That, was, uh, that money got you through but, the the dry spell. Yeah. yeah. That's how I view it, yeah. you know, at least. And it's, it's um, you know, try to be wise with it, cut expenses, yeah. right? You know, ref you know, everybody analyze like, do I really need this thing? Yeah. Do I really need that thing? Yeah, totally. like, Patreon, if everybody who does Patreon lost, you know, 10% of their, their subscribers, all that kind of stuff. And, mm. uh, you know, so I was just curious, but it makes sense. And I feel, you so know, are you all your, so your to, weddings like this summer are going as per normal? It's hard to say, and it depends on where they live in the US, right? So for us, we live in DC, so pretty democratic, safe, conservative, conservative in the word of like, they're, they're slow at letting yeah. things get yeah. bigger. Um, whereas I have mentees in Texas who they've been shooting oh, full yeah, size weddings the they've whole time. <laughs> oh God, we've got students yeah. in Texas yeah. and Florida, Texas and yeah. Florida, and it just yep. boggles my mind. Yeah. yeah, so it's, um, you know, so for us, we're thankful. I mean, a lot of couples have moved to, you know, photography was the thing they kept. You know, like they, the poor DJs, they're getting out of here. You know, florists, hey, we don't need six bouquets. We need one now, yeah. mm -hmm. um, you know, but for us, it's worked out. And then we're slowly, they just made an announcement recently, actually, that will open up to like, I think it's 50 people inside is like the limit, but they're gonna, they reassess yeah. it each month yeah. now um look locally and then also too it depends on like vaccinations yeah. and like the data is looking good but it's not perfect yet right you know obviously and so not to make this a covid podcast but it's um you know i think there's going to be like the middle of the venn diagram whatever yeah. they call that where we're like slowly hitting that point to, but it's actually tension and we're like okay this is not the time when people who don't want it to open would open it but we do understand yeah. and we're i think we're in that right now so it's like ugly yeah. and messy but also it feels better. like there's there's light know. shining through the other side yeah. of the tunnel now yeah i'm waiting until i can visit canada <laughs> you know the canada was like no americans i was like what yeah. you know <laughs> i feel like i'm glad i got my niagara falls trip in you know the, the token american oh, there dream you go. to visit right. canada. You still gotta do the canadian rockies <laughs> i know i i'm ready um I also went to Toronto two years ago, which was which was cool. But obviously, that's a very different yeah. vibe. Um, so yeah, you do all that stuff. We we talked about this last year, where you guys were supposed to launch a course last year. That gets pushed back, right? I, I think all of us made those calls. You know, it was either uh, you know insensitive or or not the right time. And financially, we're like, do we think our audience even has money to pay it's for it right at the moment? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was, yeah. I mean, it was the perfect storm that hit, I mean, as it was for all of us, but with regards yeah. to that, that project, like two man, you, a, it's not yeah. the right time to be putting that out in the world, but B, we just couldn't pull it off. Like we couldn't finish the filming yeah. with, yeah. with all the restrictions, right? Like we um, just wouldn't have been able to complete it. So yeah. So it, it, it went, well, it didn't go back burner because we just leaned into it for another year. Well, it did go back burner for a few yeah. months in the summer. True. We just completely forgot about it because we were just too yeah. emotionally attached to it that we had to just yeah. let it go for a bit, True. but then it, then it become, yeah. became full force again. And actually what we've ended up with is probably way better. I don't think we could have, could have got mm -hmm. it to the level we got it to if we, if we'd, um, yeah really last year yeah yeah, yeah. So, oh that's oh, super cool frozen oh, you were frozen for a sec <laughs> i know we're, we're back now i think i think we're good we i saw it but uh yeah no that's that's awesome i feel like that's you know again it's very similar to the course and with like your private life you know you're like oh we we get a second chance to take one more stab yeah. at this and it, and have the first round not count per se or you know yeah. Uh, Lanny's in the triathlon and he's like, oh, actually my time's not going to count and I get a few more months yeah. to train and be like, okay, yeah. great. Like, let's, yeah. let's do and that. It's, it's such a, um, it's such a gift to be able to start over. Like, it, yeah, it really no, is sure. like, it is a curse as well, but in some ways it's like, oh, it's a blank canvas. It's a, it's a renew, renewal of energy. It's a yeah. renewal mm -hmm. of yeah. mindset, which is huge. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, totally. it's been really good to start over. Yeah. And and I think now, before we uh, dive into the course, what I've realized over the last year is, you know, I had a few, I do like long-term mentorship 
that's like my non-public like education you have like three or four mentees who they just need somebody not just like what to do but like a month from now like hey somebody is check- checking in on you and it's like my job to be like okay let's address that let's address those client yeah. emails let's just have kind of that person and everybody learns differently um but i i started doing that over the last few years and the mentees stayed they were kind of like no we're already in this like what what more time to need somebody exactly. on your you know who's yeah, for you true. Um, totally um yeah. yeah but i saw them kind of recover more quickly than maybe people who chose to go it alone. And so I was going to say is, um, I feel like we'll come back to a place where education is like, it's going to be an investment. And then, you know, you know, wh- whatever it is, whether it's shooting business, SEO, whatever, like people are now going to be more, a little bit more careful as we ease out, right? Like, as we're coming out of the, the bear situation and we're like, okay, like if I'm going to buy something, it has to be freaking yeah. awesome. Well, it has you to know? make so, sense. Uh, it has to make sense with your, yeah. you know, your Ethos. future outlook, mm-hmm. you, you know? Yeah. Yeah, we have to have, you know, for example, if we're going to invest in a wedding photography education of some sort, we have to have some level of confidence that there's going to be wedding photography industry in the future, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Especially, you know, with you guys with like the international vibe, if somebody says I want to do exactly what you guys do, you know, both business wise and uh, shooting wise, that's that's tough. Yeah, you're like, all right, I want to make sure that you can get out there and shoot. So no, that makes sense for sure. Yeah. Well, and if somebody said that to us, I would say, don't sign up for our course. <laughs> yeah. Um, because it's yeah. total, but a lot of people think, um, think that's what our workshop is about is how to shoot like us and how, how to, mm. and, um, it's really not, I mean, that's all, that's all education and information to get there. Um, yeah. but the course yeah. is more about a learning curve. It's more about becoming, it's learning experience. Learning, it's more about becoming aware of the unique way that you see the world and the way that you experience the world through information, like the information mm. and education sure. is definitely part of it, but yeah, it's more about self-discovery than just here's yeah. how to, here's how to, um, I mean, the reality is replicate the shot, every piece of information in our workshop, in any yeah. workshop, it's already out there somewhere. The information is out there, yeah. right? In one place or another, totally. we can go and we can try to find it all. But um, yeah, what- Well, you, he, he's the perfect example because we've heard like SEO information, totally. you can get anywhere, but when you actually presented it at Creative, I was like, wow, I'm it's actually- the absor- way, It's the way you present it, right? How you package it, it's sure. the experience yeah. you take you take us through in, yeah. in learning it. That's why learning is different than just information, just education. It's that, that experience yeah. is, is what you're signing up for. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Totally. Yeah. It's like, uh, we're all curators and commentators now, you know, and we're just like, okay, like I like how two man curates and commentates. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and, and you have heroes too, right? Like it's, yeah. you know, those people who you're like, Oh, I learned this from this person and here's how I apply mm-hmm. it. Yeah, totally. know, here's the, here's yeah. the app. And, and the reason yeah. why yeah. it, the reason why you learned it, meaning you actually integrated it, right? It resonated. It, it actually, yeah. you got it, right? Um, is because of the experience around it, the experience, the learning experience versus just hearing the information, right? That's that's what yeah. determines to whether also, or not you actually. Could, yeah, else people could just get it from reading their camera manual or their flash manual. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. I, th- I think that's a uh, that's that's going to be a, a plague of our industry forever, but in a good way. Where it's like, you know, I imagine like a football player, like an American football player, somebody saying, "How do I strap up my helmet?" And you're like, "There's probably a helmet manual, guys." Like, yeah. just, just button, it, yeah. you know, or whatever. And if you but, Google enough things, you'll find time, all the information you, you more than you ever needed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, on everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's one thing I've learned too over the last few years. It's like. Uh, you know, when I've had my own bouts of like, you know, do I have anything to say? Do I say it differently? Right. Like those imposter oh, yeah. things. Yeah. But it's also it, it's uh, the what I've, I've learned is kind of like what we're talking about is like people want to hear Adam's version, yeah. Eric yeah. and Lanny's version. They want to hear this, you know, and like because um, I, I see the other, you know, courses who are, in, you know, for for business. I see the other people who are SEO, all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, oh, like it's already done. That's where I would go if I wanted to learn. Why would mm-hmm. they? Why would I start something new? But it's like, you know, it's at the same time, there's nothing else in our lives 
where they're not continually making and improving, yeah. you know, products yeah. or services, cars, etc. Education. Raising, how we're raising all doing that, so it's that, like, uh, <laughs> that basement. The, right. the basement is the, yeah. the, the bottom floor is always is the always ladder. Going up. Yeah, we're always climbing up the ladder of everything that's already been done by, by, other by others to like get up yeah. onto their shoulders and like, okay, where do we go from here, right? Yeah, totally. And it's, you know, what's well, something I'm a, I'm a tech dork. So I always think like within less than a hundred years, we went from the first production vehicle to the electric vehicle yeah. and, and have it be like moderately solid, you know, yeah. and like, what will the next? Well, I heard, I heard uh, yeah, totally. uh, on a podcast somewhere, I heard they were, they were discussing like, what would happen if all of humanity's knowledge were to disappear? So we woke up, you woke up the next day and it's just mm. you and a small group of friends still alive in the world and everything, all the technology, all the advancements, all the knowledge and information that humanity has amassed is now gone. And to think, imagine okay. tr having to start over, like how many generations would it take just to, just to reinvent the needle and the thread to be able to start right. like right. climbing back up yeah. that ladder that we've, yeah. you know? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> There'd be a really funny TV show. <laughs> it's like everybody has to restart. And it's like, t not like Walking Dead zombie vibes, but like, yeah, needle and thread, fire, yeah. wheel, and the abacus. Yeah, abacus. All right, you got, these are what we're, yeah, like this is what we have, we need for the future of humanity. Like how many generations will uh, it take, yeah. you know? That's intense. Totally. <laughs> so tell me um, two things. Tell me about this course, you know, Two Man You, and how big and extensive it is. Okay. You know, for somebody who's looking at an online version. And, how does it compare to the traditional, you know, two man regular workshop, yeah. you know, in person mm -hmm. hanging out? Well, I mean, basically when we set out to create this thing, um, we'd reached a point, I guess, with our in-person workshops where we've, because every yeah. workshop we've ever taught, at least we, we like to hope it's an improvement on the previous one. Cause we always go back to the drawing board and think about, okay, so how could, how can we, how can we curate this experience to be better? So create a more transformative sure. experience. How do we make it better next time? And yeah, we sort of reached a point where we, we, we felt like this is as good as we can make this. And then we started to mm -hmm. realize there's untapped potential. Um, if we were to create something like, like two man, you, what we eventually started to imagine with two man, you would be like, for example, yeah. at the in-person experiences, um, there were three days of, of so information overload, like as much as we could get in, yeah. in three days. Everything we got three full, big, exhausting days and you're drinking from a fire hose, right? There's right. We can't right. give the amount of space that people need to absorb, integrate, to process, right. To practice. And yeah. as well, we can only, you know, with a group of photographers, take them out and watch a shoot, you know, in, in one location, you know, like imagine yeah. if we could take them to 27 different locations and see how we would shoot in different environments, different lighting at scenarios, wedding. take them, take them to an actual wedding with us and watch and see what it looks like at an right. actual wedding. Right. These are all things we can't do at an in-person workshop. Yeah. Um, imagine if they could yeah. see like actually what we're seeing through the viewfinder as we're shooting it from, from three or four yeah. different angles. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then we started to imagine right. what two man you could be. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's when we set out to, and, and it's, we don't, we never intended it to be an online course in, in the sense that it's just a series of videos that lives on your computer and you know, yeah. here you go. Yeah. And you start just watching them. Hopefully it's a semester. It's been designed it's as a semester. semester. It's been designed as 14 weeks. It's going to be dripped out over four. Well, I think I'm going to drip it out over seven weeks just because I know people have different schedules, but it's going to be dripped out over time. We're doing weekly Q and A's. As much as possible, we're holding people accountable for their investment because yeah. that, I mean, that's what we yeah. could do in the workshop is we could hold people accountable to their investment. We, we, could, could, we tell, could craft that. We could tell people, you guys can't go on your phones for the next three days. Like, yeah. I mean, we could only yeah. say that to them, yeah. but we could encourage it sure. and we could, we sure. could make sure they weren't right. And make sure they were fully present and absorbing. Yeah. Um, but we could, we could carefully um, craft that experience, right? The journey through those three days, the arc of the learning, uh, like like that even more than the actual curriculum and the content and the information we've, we put so much intent into crafting that experience. And that's what we want with mm. two man U as well, so that we can basically take them under our wings for this 14 weeks and hold them accountable to actually having a learning experience mm. that 
that can yeah. change what they do. Yeah. Right. We just, we, we've done everything we can to not make it one of those courses that a hundred people buy and 3% yeah. finish. We want a hundred mm, or however yeah. many people to buy it. We want 97% to finish. I mean, yeah. I'd like a hundred percent to finish, but yeah. that's, that's plus, the way and sure. plus we, we wanted to try to as much as possible, recreate um, that in-person thing that you, that you can only get at an in-person workshop, like the face to face. And yeah. so that's why we're, we're doing it like a semester so that we can go live into the community on pace with them and answer their quest, their yeah. questions directly, right. As they're going through the, the program. Mm -hmm. um, so that was an important piece for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. I mean, that's, I didn't even know this, you know, creative was like one of my first, it was my biggest time speaking. Oh, yeah. Right. So like a hundred people, mm -hmm. 200 people or whatever. And I knew though that workshops, even myself attending, you know, over time, I got to the point where I knew, hey, if I'm going to a workshop, let's try to take the other days after at off so we can implement, you know, like there's the learning time and there's implementation mm -hmm. time. And that was really useful. But at the beginning, you're not doing that, right? You're, you can barely get the three days off. You can barely get the ticket yeah. to, you know, wherever the workshop is mm -hmm. or whatever. And, and, and it is worth it, right? It's still worth it, but it's like you need time to implement it all or to really soak it in or like go through your 2,000 words of notes, yeah. whatever it is. And... Even with my little session, something I knew, I, I especially with SEO, I'm like, none of you can do anything during the yeah. talk, you know, right? Like they literally, like at least in your session, you guys, they could at least touch their camera oh, and go, oh, say, oh, okay. that's where that you know, dial is. Or, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I told everybody, I was like, I have a few, you know, free episodes, a few random, you know, videos. And I was like, you know, one, it was strategy, but I was like, DM me. And I will send you everything I have so you can get started, you know, practically. Like, you just learned the what, but I'm going to send you the how, you know. Mm -hmm. And that kind of thing is, I didn't realize how valuable that was. And, and I didn't know those stats until I started talking to other course creators where it's like, hey, people are going to buy it because in a good way, like, how they, just the same way they buy wedding photography is like, how do they think this will make my life better? You know, and we, and, it, and if they really do it, it really will. Mm -hmm. Like, most yeah, courses probably have yeah. some good... But the, I, yeah, I mean, that's yeah, the whole you know, strategy around most marketing's plans is to sell confidence, right? Yeah. And and yeah. of course you want people to come out of your course more confident, but the confidence doesn't come from the information. The confidence comes from doing. And unfortunately that's yeah. all on them. Um, so all we can do is sort yeah. of try and create the scenario that fosters that for them. Well, it's like, it's right. like that analogy yeah. you were using about the plant. Yeah. Right. Like the plant grows it, it in order for it to grow. It needs the right soil conditions. It needs water. It needs yeah. sunlight. Yeah. And so, you know, education that actually makes a difference th that actually yeah. is um, creating the conditions in which to actually learn and transform. Well, right. Not just the ingredients totally. themselves. Yeah. But what I'm saying is that, you know, we can do the sun, we can do the soil and the water and they have to do the sunlight. Right. Right. Yeah. Like they we can't, yeah. we can't yeah. create the entire perfect conditions. Well, and then, and then honestly, yeah. the other thing that was one of the first catalysts is for, for starting to imagine two man, you, um, is it like two and a half years ago, we did a alumni reunion retreat, uh, thing in, in, in Bali. Yeah. And so we had, um, about 40 of our alumni from around the world join us for this like reunion, um, that's and awesome. a creative retreat. A creative basically. retreat. And and during those, what was it three or four days? We, five days? we saw the potential for this is where we can go from there because everybody had already shared yeah. in the, the workshop experience. Everybody was at that sort of level of knowing and understanding in terms of, you know, that, that level. They all of, knew how to use their cameras. They all knew how to use, they all, yeah. you know, had their yeah. own visions. And everybody had videos. climbed the same ladder and we were all at the yeah. top of this ladder. Yeah. And now it's like, okay, where, where can we go from here? And the places that we went in terms of like, um, just imagining where we could go creatively, that, that sort of like, open our eyes to like, this is where, this is what we want to do with in-person experiences in the future. How do we get yeah. there? How do we, how do we build a ladder to get people? So we're all on this level. And then when we have these in-person experiences, it's, it's like, it's not learning all the technical stuff. And it's like, we, it's like, we're already yeah. at the top of this ladder. Now, where do we go from here? Um, so that was, yeah. that was an eye opener for us mm -hmm. to see that potential. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, yeah, you think about your the people on that retreat. We'll use them as an example. And this is something I struggle with as well, where it's like, okay, I've gotten good at getting clients, getting my ideal client, making, uh, at least for me, more money than I could have ever imagined growing up. You know, like I was raised by a single mom, kicked out of college, small town, you know, like all that stuff. And, you know, so I'm like, okay, great. What is there for me in the next education market? How can I go from seven to eight? eight to nine, nine to 10, you know, but, and at the same time, all the value, all the education world is like, let's teach people how to go from yeah. zero to one, yeah. or one to two, mm-hmm. two to three. <laughs> and it's that. awesome. It, you know, and I support that, but there, there's a, a lax for us, you know, right. And, and things change too. Like I went to a, uh, a sales workshop, you know, cause I was like the, it, there's a word that makes photographers cringe at sales, you know, or at least for me. And I'm like, Oh, that sounds <laughs> awful. Um, but I was like, let me, you know, I respected the person teaching it. And yeah, the workshop was the most expensive workshop I've ever been to, right? Uh, You know, but it's like, it was at the highest level of thinking about this topic, you know? And that was like, okay, that was great. We need, where, where's that, you know, right? Where it's not like, hey, how do I autofocus? And it's not degrading any of that stuff, but there's, um, that's such an interesting take. And Mm -hmm. the fact that 40 people, for even you guys, you think like, oh, we've already taught everything we want to teach. 40 people said no we think there's more we want to learn from you guys like there's there's more of your brain we want to pick give us the next piece and uh and and that's really cool too well and at that stage it's not it's not well in none of our workshops i i feel like the the learning is linear it's not us to them or them to us but especially at the retreat yeah like we actually we only hosted one session at the retreat in five days all the other people hosted the other sessions because That's the yeah. next stage. And the was, next stage is yeah, you got to yeah. figure out what you're doing, why you're doing it, dissect it, and, and share it. Well, and a lot of the learning just happens yeah. outside of the actual structured, you yeah. know, curriculum. You know, like yeah. just that. Totally. You know, being together with like-minded creatives and artists who've you know had shared struggles, um, conversations yeah. that you head off in. Um, and w- the other thing we've learned at at the workshops is the power of groups. Right. Versus like a one-on-one, there's something special about a one-on-one, but there's, sure. but when we have a group, what happens is like, for example, with questions, somebody else asks a question you didn't even think to ask. And as a result, it unlocks some tangent that we head off on and and opens up all this, you know, valuable stuff that wouldn't have been unlocked if we hadn't thought of that question ourselves, you know, it's like a web of learning essentially. Yeah. I mean, that's why uh, I think about when people ask her, like, why should I listen to podcasts? I'm like, because of that, yeah. because you can have a conversation and we can pr- we can kind of have a, a guide or what we want to talk about. We generally want to talk about the course or or whatever. And then but I think the brilliance of it, at least for, for me, was like, let's make that. What would it be like to just listen to a conversation between Adam, yeah. Erica and Lanny, yeah. you know, and um, and like somebody who's naturally curious, somebody who has become a friend. And, but also we've all been through a similar thing last year. All and that knows stuff, how to you know, ask, think is, ask uh, the right questions. You know, you, you often like, you hear it's like, okay, if you could sit down, if you could have dinner with anybody, any famous celebrity from any time, who would it be, yeah. right? You come up with somebody, <laughs> yeah. but then actually yeah, yeah. try to imagine that. A, how nervous you'd be. B, would you actually think of yeah. asking questions? And and C, would they be in the mood to address those questions? Whereas yeah. a podcast is exactly, totally. right? It's somebody who knows how to ask the right questions. They're there because they want to be there. Yeah. And so it's probably going to be better than an actual dinner with that celebrity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I always say like, I've never had any, we've probably had like less than two episodes where it's been like, there's been like negative feelings about it or, or say, you know, or like spilling tea or something like that. You know, it's not a news mm-hmm. podcast. Right. But there definitely is uh at least for me, I'm always like, I'll ask the dumb questions. That's fine. I'll, I'll ask the questions everybody wants to ask, but nobody yeah. has the heart to ask. Um, but obviously, you know, there's there's none of that. With no, you guys. Like so questions. tell no me, uh, questions are good. <laughs> silly questions are good. <laughs> how many? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Give us your best. <laughs> how many silly videos? question? Oh, your best silly question. So usually, uh, I would ask like, "What's your favorite ice cream flavor?" Uh, sometimes, if I wanted like a little little icebreaker, but I feel like that's too easy yeah. for you guys. Uh-huh. Yes. Ghost in leche. So. Uh, this is a personal thing for me. I want to ask most embarrassing uh, relationship moment for you two. We just get real deep and personal real quick. <laughs> like embarrassing. I think you've been together a while. 
Yeah, or one of you, you know, or like uh, something I always ask couples in a joking manner, you know, if uh, or a couple will bring it up, like the time the other person passed gas or farted, yeah. you know, and, and and for you guys, you've been married a long time, so you've seen it all. You have kids, so you're like, hey, it's it's whatever. But uh, well, I mean, a lot of a, a lot of um, moments come to mind from like Teach our first kids. dance, our first uh, our first dates. <laughs> Oh, yeah, those were very I was super awkward and Erica's my first Erica's my first <laughs> girlfriend. Um so I'd never like oh that's cute. You know, I'd never I'd never kissed a girl, you know, our first dates and sure. I was like super shy and awkward around yeah. Yeah. girls. Yeah. Um and so, yeah. we have we have embarrassing moments all the time. I mean just very nature teaching together and I have this inability to um sugarcoat or inability to fake. So if Lanny's yeah mansplaining me which he does all the time um or yeah. if he's interrupting me or if he's just not letting me deliver the content the way i would like to deliver it i'll just open up on him right there mm. i'll just be like you just shut the yeah. fuck up and go downstairs like <laughs> I, I actually have to yeah. kick him out of the room sometimes and you know afterwards i'm just like eh, probably could have dealt with that better but so can he. <laughs> like, Lanny, are your feelings hurt? Yeah, 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 yeah. When Lanny becomes mansplainy, mansplainy, there's something there. But, yeah, yeah, mansplainy. Really yeah. So That's those, awesome. I mean, those moments happen every day. Some people appreciate them. Like we get lots of feedback of people are like, oh, you just, you just make me feel normal. Um, and then mm. there's some people that really dislike them. And, and when they dislike yeah. them, um, it's hard not to take it to heart. Like it's hard not to be like, Ooh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Like, Oh, we'll try and do better. But then at the same time, I'm like, well, it's just us. Yeah. So it's, yeah. I can't change it. It's real. <laughs> it's real. It's real. Yeah. So it's like, uh, I think about it when, uh, like watching Saturday night live, if you ever watched an episode of SNL and you see one of the actors break, one half of the crowd thinks that's awesome. They're like, this is the greatest moment. We got to see this actor break. Like, yeah. that's so cool. Uh, and there's another part that's like, they should be more professional. Oh, yeah. yeah. But it's a comedy yeah. show. Like, what are you yeah, doing? Like, as if they can you help know. it if they're laughing. Like, you're, if you're yeah. taken over yeah. by laughter, there is nothing you can do about it. It has nothing to do with professionality. Yeah. And I feel like that's the yeah. same with Lanny and I. Like, if, if I'm doing something to bother him or vice versa, like, it's not a choice that I'm yelling at him right now. It's yeah. literally uh, my inner <laughs> debatable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love it. So tell me, uh, we got, we got off track and that's, that's my fault, but what, uh, what's inside two man, you, uh, for people who maybe have never been to a workshop or didn't know about the workshops, what are, what uh, are you hoping actually that on the that? topic we were just, I would say that is one of the fundamental core aspects of it is it is honest. It's one, it was one of the most mm, important parts for us when we set out to create it. I mean, it is full transparency, yeah. full open book, nothing held back, nothing sugar coated. I mean, it's the good, the bad and the ugly. Oh, yeah. like you, you, but you see every yeah. one of the, this is one of the things that's sort of passed over from our workshops into the course, except it's much more comprehensive in, in the online courses that we show you every frame from a wedding. And in Straight this case, camera. you're going to see mm. every frame from the wedding as well as the behind the scenes co coverage of that. And honestly, that makes everybody feel so much better. Like when people see our straight out of camera stuff, they're like, oh. You get to see the that photos. That looks like yeah. eye contact. Shit. Yeah. You get yeah. to see the photos coming out of the camera as, as they are straight out of camera. But also in Two Man U, you get to like hear our thoughts. Like, like literally we're telling you like, yeah. here's what we're doing now. Here's what we're thinking, right? And it's an actual real wedding. Yeah. Um, but yeah. It, I mean, more accurately would be what's not on the, like the course is very much a shooting focused course it's okay it's about our which like shooting i feel like has three very boring. key parts that are all intertwined and it's very hard to separate them as a photographer but you've got, you've Wait, got the, sorry i'm just when you say shooting i would say more like the the entire creative process of creating the work yeah, right? which says, isn't just yeah, shooting, so imagery. so there's the craft of photography right which is your technical skills sure. there's the art of photography which is much harder to right. teach, but it's where the magic is. And then there's the industry of photography. Yeah. And we cover as much as, as we, we feel comfortable. It's honest. Like I'm not weird. We don't cover SEO yeah. because I don't know. Yeah. If, We're not experts. We're not, we, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we, you know, we've stuck to where we feel our strengths are, which mm -hmm. is 
all in the shooting, yeah. all in the creative process, all in the client relations. Um, and of course, some of that stuff is awesome. business as well, but it's, I'd say it's not a business focused. Yeah, I'd say our approach to the business mm-hmm. side is just being a total open book uh, in terms of yeah. here's what we do, yeah. here's what we've done to get where we are, yeah. Yeah. you know. Um, but we don't consider that to be our strength, honestly. And so sure. it's sure. it's more in everything else that happens in, in the, the entire, the entire client experience, I guess. Which from, is business, but which it's is, really- Which is business, but yeah. in, in terms of like, um, yeah. from everything yeah. that happens before the wedding, everything that happens at the wedding, and then everything that happens after the wedding, yeah. you know? Um, yeah. 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 It's like 121 yeah. videos. So. That's what I was going to ask is like how many- you So do, it clocks in, in. Like just, just the video content alone, which is only part of two menu, but um, what was the total? Yeah. It's like uh, 60 hours, something like that. Right. I was looking it up. It's like, it's, it's, that's more than all three of the star Wars trilogies combined. Oh yeah. Our, our video team, yeah. like they didn't know what they got themselves into, but yeah. like midway through the yeah. process, they're like, you guys, this is more than producing an entire season of Seinfeld. Like in yeah. terms of the editing yeah. required, like they're like, this is more editing oh, than yeah. a sitcom, an entire season of like modern family. <laughs> because I mean, it's, I mean, we did a full week of, of studio shooting, um, right. like in, right. in a studio with all the lighting and whatnot. But then we also went out into the field for, for, an, full for an entire week. Then we did a full week at our house and we did the behind the scenes. And then, right. and then they came with us to a real wedding, right? So it was three and a half <laughs> weeks of shooting. It's insane. How long? And then, and then just in terms of where our expectations and, and standards and dreams were in terms of the production level, you know, it's just, yeah, we all got in over our heads um, to like to make it live up to what we knew it could be. We got there. We're super proud, yeah. but I mean, it's, it took a toll. I mean, this thing it has toll been on our t- retirement. It took a toll on us. <laughs> I mean, this is, um, but, but honestly, like of all the things we've done in our career, you know, because we often, people often ask us about like, are, are we passionate about like, we're not passionate wedding photographers, mm-hmm. you know, we're, we're not, right. we, yeah. we fell into weddings as, you know, yeah. as it, as it happened. And, you know, somebody asked us recently, like, do you miss shooting weddings? Because we haven't been shooting weddings this year. So honestly, no, <laughs> like weddings themselves yeah. are hard work. Like we're struggling, you know, it's a yeah. mental marathon. Every wedding is like, no, we don't, we don't miss them. But if we're passionate about anything, it's what wedding photography has allowed us to do. It's, it's been a vehicle to allow us to totally create these kind of learning experiences and well, not just too, that. too many was a, a passion it's project. It's been a vehicle for um, seeing the world differently, right? Not just through weddings, but the, mm. more through photography, I would say. Photo- photography but, has taught yeah. us, yeah, I would say to appreciate things, notice things that we didn't sure. notice before. Sure. You know? Yeah. yeah. No, totally. That's what, the one thing I think about. It's because uh, there's all this, and you, you have to not think about this, I feel like, but it's there's people who are like, we know educators who they fully went into education, we'll call it, right? They fully devoted themselves to that. They stopped shooting, right? And there are some wedding photographers, and this is after 10 years, right? Or 15 years, right? They, they were juggernauts in the industry, and then they stopped shooting, and they just start teaching and say, mm-hmm. hey, here's, here's what we did. And there's a, a feeling of people who, hey, if you're not doing it, then mm-hmm. you're not as qualified to teach mm-hmm. it. You know, there's there's some people who say something like that, but then it's like, you know, you have to think about, you know, insert any famous sports person who's getting too old outside of Tom Brady. Like they have knowledge, they have wisdom to share. They have, you know, experience and all this kind of stuff. Um, and it's like, would you not want to listen or hear from them? And, and even that, and then I think too, like I, I used to get, you know, we just do weddings, right? Everybody has that kind of like shame, right? You're at the party and you're like, Oh, what do you do? I'm like, I'm a wedding yeah. photographer. Um, but it's like, you know, like you just said, one, uh, probably the most observant people yeah, totally. on the planet, you know, <laughs> and two, we, you know, I think like analyzing emotional intelligence and how people are interacting with each other, peak moments, emotion, knowing what's going to happen, relatability, like those, those skills yeah. I think are just useful and fun and awesome. And then the third thing is like, like we said, like photography helped you guys 
maybe accelerate or you know oh we were planning to go visit this country but hey we will shoot a wedding there that sounds Mm -hmm. awesome you know uh and like that's awesome like this job can be a transformative thing for people who might not normally get to do those things and i would add add to that uh that list of you sum that up perfectly but the thing that i would say has impacted us the most and this is a this is a term from the mountaineering world I love um, because people that climb Everest do not enjoy climbing Everest. Yeah. They do not like, yes, they, In but the it, moment. it is, it is the art of suffering. And, and I, yeah. photography mm. is the art. I'd say creativity in general is the art of suffering. And there yeah. is so much to learn in that process, right? Like just, and I don't mean suffering in a bad way. I mean, that is, what's the word? Um, sure. Productive suffering. It's very productive. Mm, yeah. Like working yeah, out. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like exercise. Yeah. 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 Becoming, yeah. A, becoming a better, better human. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. 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 I'd say f- when photography has made us better humans. And, and really, sure. if, if, if I think about, because somebody was asking, one of the most dreaded questions is, what's your why? <laughs> it's like, oh my God, what's my why? Uh, I ask that all the time. I know, but I mean, it's just semantics, but man, I mean, that's a constant struggle figuring out like, is, is this our calling? What is our calling? Well, you know, um, but when I, and especially in the context of wedding photography, it's like, I'm a wedding photographer and this, is this what I, is this why I'm here? (laughs) Um, but if I think, think that, cause this is like career number five for me, career number three or four for Mm -hmm. you you know, before yeah. weddings, um, like I was, I was a mountain guide and the, my favorite right. part of that career, uh, you know, wasn't, w- w- was when I got to curate, to create these experiences for people, right. Take them out into, you know, yeah. extraordinary places and, and help facilitate a trans, a truly transformative experience for their life going forward. Right. I mean, that's what I, that's yeah. what I got yeah. off on in that career. And in a way, we've been lucky enough in this career to kind of circle back to that, to get to a place where we're able to curate experiences that can change people's lives. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, totally. It's almost like, um, and it's, it's weird, but it's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's not about wedding photography anymore, you know? And it's like, what can this do for do for your life? You know, how can this open things up for you? See the world. Like, I think, uh, you know, at least for me in this, whole podcast and even my course we were filming like the promo video for it and it's very uh this is probably the most we've said publicly about this but it's like anti-influencer if you will we'll put it this way so it like starts out of me being like the influencer in a g-wagon I like, love during, that. like just the youtube influencer but then uh eventually it's kind of like i'm just a normal guy raising a single single uh, you know by a single mom small town kicked out of college uh but then i started shooting weddings and it's opened up this yes. life for me you know and um and it, at least for me, it's like, I'd rather do this than something else, yeah. you know? And it's kind of like teaching people how it can open up their lives or like a lot of my mentees, they're like, yeah, how do I have more work-life balance with my kids, you know, or whatever. And that's like, adjust this, you know, just turn some dials yeah. on, you know, this this thing. If you have the skill, if you want to chase yeah. it down um, and it can be so cool. And then you guys like, you get to watch people have that light bulb moment or like the mountaineering moment, mm-hmm. right? When you see somebody fall in love with mountaineering or fa- fall in love with climbing or the outdoors or uh my wife and i just went camping alone for the first time ever as a couple but like i was a boy scout camped a lot she camped with her family uh and just it was great it was awesome it was like oh yeah like we fell back yeah. in love with this yeah. and you know and trying to find those uh those things and it's like you but again like planning to go do that thing not exciting maybe even doing it at first, you're like, oh, I don't, this no, not great. You know, you, you get to the camp and it's raining, or you're climbing Everest and you've gone to the bathroom in a bag for four well, days. And sometimes, or, you know, sometimes the entire camping trip is like, well, I would have rather spent my weekend yeah. at home. Pay a bunch of money to go live like a yeah. homeless person for a couple of days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly no exactly i love it awesome well uh yeah when does uh two man you come out where can people go to find oh, more yes. about it uh all well, the details all the fun sell yeah, it up you know we sp- it's out hour. but enrollment hasn't opened yet yeah but what the biggest thing right now and this is you know i don't i don't even care if you you buy two men you to be to be honest but there is a free chapter out there that we've got right now that is just 
it's the presentation that we gave it um similar a, a creative last year it's all about our yeah. dance floor lighting yeah. except it's better because we can actually show you behind I the scenes it. and can actually demonstrate yeah. in at an actual wedding how we use the the techniques um so and it's 35 minutes this free chapter and it is it's it, high value it is super high value yeah. um so we, we would just like as as many of our photography friends out there to be able to watch that i mean yeah. it's just totally free yeah. it's it's out there until march until march 30th, 30th yeah. because on march 30th is when we open awesome. enrollment for two man you yeah. Yeah. yeah okay awesome yeah. very cool I will say that I have uh, I have seen that in person and it was awesome. It, even, it was one of those things where like kind of like we've talked about before, when you get to see somebody at a high level at something that you know how to do, at least for me, I was like, oh, yeah, I use methods one, three and six, you know, on, on my life or you're, whatever. You're saying uh, one, three and six. Do you remember the name? <laughs> yeah, like I, I won't say them on the podcast because I like my job but um <laughs> but i do respect it um i do think it every time i shoot now i'm like oh gosh i should text them um but you know it's super good i think it's super valuable for people who especially with flash yeah. who are struggling with yeah. receptions you know like receptions i've met photographers where that's the part that scares them th the most which is ironic because for me i'm like that's when i feel me the most too. comfortable i'm like yeah let's have fun yeah. you know that's yeah. when i feel like that's everything is free and everything yeah. is done yeah i'm most uh, relaxed after, so after i would really say cool. after the first dance is when i feel that like okay now it's just icing on the cake yeah 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 no 100 percent. yeah my big thing I'm, I'm trying to get better at uh i wanted last year to be the year but i was like i do want to get better at shooting details you know like it sounds stupid but mm -hmm. i was like i suck at this but and my clients still don't really care about it so i'm like oh well should i mm -hmm. do it anyway but I'm like, let's just see if we can turn up the publication notch. Yeah. Let's just see if we can we can try it. And that's what publications look for. Yeah. And uh, and I, I talked to you know Rebecca Yale, who's like the queen of the light and airy you know mm -hmm. details mm -hmm. and all stuff. And I was like, yeah, I don't know if this is for me. <laughs> so, well, it's it's, not, it's interesting know, because um, I can't remember what I was reading the other day, but it's people are are prone to work on their weaknesses. Like, oh, I'm bad at. I'm bad at details, yeah. so I'm going to work on my detail shots, or I'm bad at lighting, so I'm gonna, which is which is good, but you'd be better sure. off working on your strengths and your weaknesses. Because if you're working on your strengths, you're working on something that's intuitive to you and something that you're naturally going to be drawn to, and it's yeah. going to be more sustainable. Yeah. Whereas if you're working on your weaknesses, like like accounting, for example, like I can work on accounting all I want, I'm not yeah. going to be drawn to do it. And I, I'd yeah. be better off spending that time working on something that's that is going to elevate me, which is my strengths, because that has to do with yeah. my innate wisdom, my innate wisdom that just comes from my bone marrow. Right. So um, totally. That's and true. I'm sure in some people's case, yeah, details are their strengths. Right. Like that's right. Yeah, yeah totally. But, but, but not it. you. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, and uh, uh, yeah, you know, we just making sure everybody doesn't skip leg day. That's what we're saying. To everybody. <laughs> like, um, right, yeah. <laughs> well, cool. Where can people go to find out more about Two Man U? Sign up for a uh, free lesson. More information. It's, it's Two Man U dot com. So, That's where all the information so is. Two Man T W O M A N N, and then just the letter U dot com. That's right, and that's where you can awesome. go watch the free dance floor workshop. So basically right now, awesome. all the buttons there will take you straight to that free workshop. Yeah. And then on March 30th, Perfect. enrollment opens. Um, and and all it. the information is there include, I mean, it's, <laughs> it is a scroll a thon. Oh. So get ready to scroll. Well, you but, know, you but, know. but when you scroll far enough yeah. down, there's a yeah. whole Q and A section. So we've tried to think of any questions people could have and answer them right there. Sure. Um, so all the details yeah. are, are there and that's where it is. Yeah. yeah. I love it. I love it. No, I saw the sales page. It looks awesome. It looks really cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 They now that is like, we'll talk about this after the episode, but uh, I think it's the best one I've ever seen. So it, it like changed the standard from everybody from what I've heard. So I'm like, oh, this is the new standard. Let's, oh God. let's do it. So uh, awesome. Guys. Well, thank you so much for being on. Absolute pleasure. Uh, everybody go check out Two Man U, free lesson, and your Instagram. I feel like your your Facebook group oh, yeah, too yeah. is really good. Yeah. Two Man Workshops. Uh, There's a ton so of free still, education in there as well. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 You just got to do the work. I love it. Guys, thank you thank so much you, for being Adam. on. It was awesome. Thank you. Guys, thank you so much for checking out the Bearded Hog. It really means a lot. If you can, leave a like on the video. If you want to see more videos, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications on when new videos come out immediately. Have a wonderful day, guys, and keep being awesome.